Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about why I believe the DeWalt DWS 780 is the best miter saw for production trim work and why you might wanna buy it over competing models. Now, as you think about which miter saw to purchase, what is your cut capacity need? How much cut capacity, capacity do you need on the flat and how much do you need vertically? For me, the answer to that is number one, sometimes I have to cut large crown moldings. And number two, sometimes, actually all the time, I like to cut baseboard vertically. So for me, I want to go with a 12 inch blade on the saw because that's gonna give me the vertical capacity that I want. So then the question is, do you need a sliding miter saw or are you okay with just a fixed miter saw with your blade size of choice? For me, I want the versatility of a sliding miter saw. Now, some might say that you're gonna sacrifice some accuracy, and in my experience, that's very negligible. If you know how to have decent arm control with your miter saw, a slider is not gonna hurt your quality of work, but it's gonna give you much more versatility for certain things. So for me, I want a 12 inch blade with a sliding capacity. Before we go any further, I also wanna talk about your blade size. There's a lot of misinformation out there and misconceptions that would lead you to believe that a 10 inch blade is gonna be superior and more accurate than a 12 inch blade. That is simply not true. If you put a quality 12 inch blade on a quality saw, you're gonna get very good results. If you don't believe that and you think that there's major deflection with a 10 inch blade versus a 12 inch blade, I challenge you to put a caliper on both saws, spin the blades on two different saws, 10 and 12 inch, and see what the runout difference is. If you put a quality blade on both saws, you're gonna have the same runout. Now, where some guys might say that you lose accuracy, uh, with a larger saw, you're obviously gonna have more weight on the head. So as you push and pull the head forward and backwards, there is the potential that with your own arm, you can manipulate that head in one direction or the other. You can prevent those issues by just using common sense and pushing straight forward and straight back and being conscious of the weight of the head of the saw whenever you're pushing through on beveled cuts. It's really not that big of a deal, and it's certainly not a deal breaker that would force you into the position of having to buy a 10 inch saw just for the sake of accuracy. Another thing to keep in mind is blade options. Almost all miter saws are gonna work with the same size arbor. This applies specifically to the Festool Capex. If you go the Capex route, it has an odd size arbor and you're gonna to have to buy special saw blades for that, such as the Tenru Silencer. I used to run the Capex. Once I got rid of them, I had about five or six Tenru Silencers laying around that would really only work on the Capex unless I bought a special guide bushing. I ended up t having to sell all those blades and take a loss. That's another reason I like the DeWalt. It's gonna take universal blades along with a lot of other miter saws. When it comes to miter saws, do not buy into the hype that just because you spend a whole bunch of money on the saw that it is gonna be more accurate. I've heard that so many times that my mind is numb from those comments saying that Festool Capex is more accurate whenever the reality is most of the carpenters saying that have never put a straight edge on the saw or calibrated it. They just think because they spent $1,500 on it that it's automatically gonna be good. That is not true. None of these miter saw manufacturers have their process worked out to the point where these miter saws come truly perfectly calibrated from the factory. They all need to be checked individually by us as carpenters whenever we purchase the saw and get them tuned up you'll often find that these saws do not come out of the box calibrated very well at all. As a matter of fact, even one of my Festool Capexes had a bent fence, which made it impossible to calibrate the saw because if I'd calibrate one side of the saw, that would throw off the other side, had to actually get a different fence put on it. 
So things like that, uh, those are just really common misconceptions that you don't want to fall into the trap of believing. The two most important things if you want an accurate miter saw is one, calibrate the thing, and number two, put a good quality blade on the miter saw. This here is a blade that comes with a DeWalt miter saw. This is junk. It's a thin curve blade. It's not high quality. It's not going to give you the best cut. And it certainly doesn't have quality carbide on it. If you want to cut wood well, invest in a good blade. A good blade is going to spin really well and going to have high quality carbide. If you throw a caliper on this saw with one of these blades, you'll find that the run out is much, much less than one of these cheaper thin curve blades. One of the other reasons that I really like the DeWalt is because I can put a big, heavy, industrial quality blade on it and it will handle that size blade just fine. With a saw such as the Festool Capex, it will not handle a big, heavy blade like this. The blades that I run on all my miter saws is the FS Tool SM6300, runs you about a buck 80, but you'll get a ton of resharpenings out of it and it goes absolutely forever. I'll link that in the notes below. The next reason that I love the DeWalt saws is that they're very easy to calibrate, especially on the bevel. To calibrate these, it's just a matter of turning some bolts on the back. It's very intuitive and easy to understand. The detent plate on the front is gonna be pretty typical, just like most miter saws. It can be a little bit fussy, but again, not really any different than any other miter saw. Next reason I love the DeWalt miter saws is price point. You get a great saw for a great price point. Um, I think for the amount of work that you can put on one of these stalls, it's one of the best ROI tools that you can purchase if you're in the trades. Right here, you've got the DWS 780. This is a 12 inch slider with the XPS light. We'll talk more about that in a second. Running about 600. Back here, another awesome saw. This is the 12 inch fixed. This is the DWS 716 with the XPS light. That'll run you about 350. Now you can get another version of this 12 inch slider that's quite a bit less money. There's two key differences that I know of with that saw. That saw is the DWS 779 and you will not get the XPS light with that. And the saw is quite a bit heavier according to the specs. I've never actually handled one one of the most common questions I get is what is the difference between the DWS 780 and 779? Biggest differences is just simply the light, the weight, and that the cheaper saw is manufactured in a different country, which may or may not affect the quality of the saw. No one really knows. Next big thing with why I love the DeWalt miter saws is durability and longevity. Let's start with durability. Durability is the saw's ability to handle abuse. What can you throw at the saw before it starts to fail? And if you're running a construction company and you've got employees, you know that these tools get abused. They do not get finessed. They're gonna get hit, smacked, dropped. They're gonna be pushed to the limit on what they're cutting. And the DeWalt saws just keep going and going and going as opposed to certain other manufacturers that charge exorbitant amounts of money for their tools, which have motor failures within the first few years. Another reason I love the DeWalt saws is these saws will go forever. I have run into a lot of carpenters, cabinet installers, other trim guys who are older than I am, and they're still running miter saws that are, look like they're from World War I era. They just keep cutting, they keep doing their job. They're one of the best value investments that you'll find in a tool. Now I'm gonna try to not come across as too horribly bitter about the Festool Capexes, but I did own two of them. I sold both of them. Both of the motors failed within the warranty period, but it always kind of put a bad taste in my mouth that during the time that countless motors were failing on those saws all over the country, all over the world, the prices continued to increase annually for those saws. Uh, and as far as anyone could tell, it was the exact same saw. That always bugged me. It really turned me off from using those miter saws. Whereas a DeWalt is proven, it just keeps going and going and going. Now, to be fair, Festool has allegedly 
address those motor issues in their newer model of the Capex. Time will tell, but I have since moved on and I'm happy with where I'm at with this DWS 780. The other feature that I love about the DWS 780 is the bevel lock on the back. I love the handle that the DeWalt saw uses to lock the bevel. Now, not all DeWalt saws use this same lever. This is the DWS 716, the 12 inch fixed saw. And I've just got it turned around so that you can see it. But this saw allows you to bevel and really crank that down with very minimal effort and it's very tight. Some saws have a black handle up here and it's more of a lever. In my experience, those saws do not lock down nearly as tight and are prone to slippage and need adjustment every so often. So I much prefer this handle that comes on the 716 and the 780. Another note for those of you who might be looking at a Festool Capex, I ran Capexes for a few years and there is a black handle up here that engages the bevel on the Festool Capex. I had uh, that, that handle will break and the pieces wear out. I had to have that fixed and I've seen other carpenters have the same issue. So again, it goes back to that longevity thing. This handle is rock solid. Some of these other saws are not gonna hold up as well. The next reason that I love the DWS 780 is the light. Now, a lot of saws are gonna have a laser as your cut line. The issue with lasers is they're prone to going out of calibration and might get bumped and need recalibrated. The Festool Capex has a dual laser on both sides of the blade. And I found that uh, multiple times I would have to get my little Allen wrenches out and adjust that because it would move on me. That costs time, time is money, no need for that. This saw uses an LED light which can be turned on and off with a switch up top here. That light casts light down both sides of the blade, which then causes the blade to throw off a shadow line. You can see exactly where you're gonna cut simply by looking at that shadow line. And the beauty of that is it's never gonna need calibrated. It's gonna be perfect all the time. And it also lights up the area that you're working with. So it's kind of a win-win in that regard. You get light on your workpiece and you get that shadow line so you know exactly where your blade's gonna cut. In my opinion, the XPS light is far superior to a laser. Now, there is a lower priced model of this saw, the DWS 779. It's also a 12 inch slider, but it does not come equipped with this XPS light. Um, you sacrifice quite a bit in my opinion. Uh, I believe any professional would benefit from buying the 780 and getting that light. Now the other thing about the difference between the 779 and the 780 is the weight. The 779 I believe is quite a bit heavier than the 780. So for professional use, go with the 780. If you're just a homeowner trying to save some dollars, you might wanna consider the 779 without the light. Dust collection. One point that is very lacking on the DeWalt miter saws and a lot of miter saws in general is dust collection. That is one area where the Festool Capex does shine. It has much, much better dust collection. I have just been running this saw without any vacuum and letting the dust fly. Um, it would definitely be nice if DeWalt came out with something better, but it's not a deal breaker for me. If you're working in remodel situations and dust collection is really important to you and you're always gonna have a vacuum hooked up to the saw, then this might uh, be a big negative on this saw. But for me, it's not a big deal. One other thing that I really miss about the Festool Capexes is the ability to attach miter saw wings to the side of the saw. If you look at the Festool Capexes, Festool has a V groove built in to the side of the miter saw base. This makes it really nice to attach miter saw wings to that base with either aftermarket custom built wings. You can purchase some brackets that'll attach to that V base, or if you use Festool UG stand and wings. I absolutely loved the Festool UG stand and wings. Whenever I was running that saw, uh, the Festool Capex 
sits on that cart and it can be folded up and rolled around. And you can even put the UG wings on that cart and roll the whole setup into a house all at once. Very lightweight, very convenient. I do miss that. Unfortunately, I just couldn't deal with the motor issues and the various parts breaking on the Capex. I ended up having to go a different direction and I'm really happy right now where I am with the DeWalt. I hope this helped you guys make your purchase decision. There's a lot of misconceptions out there about miter saws regarding how much money you should spend and whether you get a return on accuracy, deflection in the size of the blade and all kinds of different stuff. But I have spent so much time debating about what miter saw is gonna be the best for me. And ultimately I have landed on the 780 and I've been really happy with it. So I hope this helps you make your decision. If you've got any questions, drop a comment below and I'll try and answer. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.